This island is a myth. Socialism under palm trees, with a lot of patina and people who cope with their everyday life in the Caribbean genius way. We always say if you have a problem, you have to come up with something. In Cuba, there's a solution for everything. This island is truly the most beautiful land human eyes have ever beheld. This is what Christopher Columbus wrote in his logbook in October 1492, when he set foot on Cuba for the first time. The region between Trinidad, the colonial splendor in the south, and Havana in the north is the heart of the island and particularly rich in history. The revolution has left its mark everywhere here, in the countryside and in the capital. Also in the Bay of Pigs, it became a symbol of the Cold War in 1961. Here, Cuban exiles supported by the USA and the Cuban army faced each other. In the town of Playa Larga, in the north of the bay, people today struggle with their everyday problems because life on the island is characterized by scarcity. Ediesti Trujillo Mora and his friend Aniel Diaz Sanchez have therefore come up with a fishing method that is unparalleled anywhere in the world. In Cuba, it's hard to get things. There are no fishing supplies either. But we always say if you have a problem, you have to come up with something. <laughs> Their invention? Egesti and Daniel are fishing with tools that actually serve quite different purposes. With condoms. Once again, there were rare imported goods on the black market. Egesti needs to inflate the condom as much as possible, then the bait fish can be attached to it. The condom holds the bait about halfway up in the water. The fish comes, snaps, and wants to leave. But the air in the condom ensures that the fish can't just dive off with the prey. People always think condoms are only for sex, but they're good for many other things. You can waterproof your cell phone or your wallet. You can do a lot of things with them. The condom not only keeps the bait in suspension, but is also driven far out by the wind. An advantage because licenses for boats are hard to get. Today, however, there is no wind. Here in front, the water is too shallow. The big fish are only in deep water. It has to go really far out for us to be successful. Hopefully, they bite. Cuba's northern tip is only 150 kilometers away from Florida. The island is the largest of the Antilles. The coasts around Havana and Trinidad are particularly popular with visitors. Havana is the capital of the island nation and with almost 2.2 million inhabitants, 
one of the largest metropolises in the Caribbean. A magnificent city full of art, culture and colonial architecture, and probably with the highest density of classic cars in the world. A city with patina and clear traces of its more than 500-year history. Eudice Cordero Quiras Colchuti has to go to work. Her sister takes care of her son, Tiago Matteo. Tutti is a single parent and an entrepreneur. She has stored her most important work equipment with a neighbor. A Buick La Sabre from 1960, bought six years ago as a junk car for a whopping $25,000. The whole family chipped in for it and put just as much money into restoring the car. Now, Tutti has to recoup the money with cat rides. It's not easy, chauffeuring people, taking care of repairs, running the household and taking care of the child. You have to be a magician to balance it all. Tutti has a university degree in economics. Five years ago, she started her own business. But Havana is a highly competitive cap market. There are currently about 200 street cruiser convertibles on the road. I'm a little late. My little boy was dawdling. Now I have to find a parking spot and figure out who's last in line. Most convertible chauffeurs try their luck at Parque Central, the center of Havana. Hello, everyone. Who's last? I don't know. I haven't talked to anyone yet. Ah, yeah, yeah. Gracias. Tutti now has to wait until her competitors have snatched up guests and she can gradually move up into pole position in front of the big hotels. Quite a long queue today. I guess nothing has moved yet this morning. Yesterday, I only had two rides. I was done by 11 a.m. and by 5 p.m. I was just sitting around. With so many drivers ahead of her, Tutti's workday starts with a break and a chicken burger. Tutti is only one of two female drivers in Havana. There are passengers who prefer a woman. They say, oh great, a female chauffeur. They say women use the horn less. But there are also those who say, women driving, big danger, especially the Spanish men. We taxistas, we're like a big family. You help each other. Colleagues even sometimes say, here, Tutu, you take the ride. People would rather have your car anyway. Today, however, nothing seems to work at all. The small fishing village of Isabella de Sagua was considered the Venice of Cuba for many decades. 
with its countless piled dwellings in the middle of the water. Often, only the wooden jetties have remained. Because hurricanes destroy the constructions again and again. Once there were dozens of stilt restaurants here, today only five remain. Manuel Rodriguez Perez is the owner of the Miramar, Sea View in English. His son-in-law, Boris, has recently started helping out in the storm-ravaged stilts business. We are always on standby to move everything to safety in the event of a hurricane and wait for the storm to pass. But even so, it's certain that another storm will cause major damage again. Our stilt house designs are just not made for high winds. Tropical cyclones are becoming more frequent. Climate change is hitting Dream Islands particularly hard. The family gets by with the restaurant. At least they get enough fresh fish. The most popular dish in the Miramar are fish nuggets, breaded and deep fried fillet pieces. Only the necessary breadcrumbs are not available. And so Manuel and his son-in-law, Boris, came up with something. An electric mill that turns stale bread into breadcrumbs. The machine makes our work much easier. We used to have to do it all with a hand mill. The machine is our own invention. We put together an old electric motor, a few bicycle parts, and an old meat grinder. Maybe somewhere in the world you can find something like that in stores, but not in Cuba. The fish nuggets are going really well. Boris and the kitchen crew can hardly keep up with the flight snacks. Boris is actually a doctor and worked in a clinic until recently, but his state doctor's salary by far wasn't enough. I decided to work full-time at my father-in-law's restaurant because I'm much better off economically here. It's not what I studied for. I never saw myself as a waiter. But I'm doing well here. The contact with mostly happy people is fun. And, at least, the job pays. In Isabela de Sagua, everyone hopes that the next hurricane will be a long time coming. The name Bay of Pigs, Bahia de Cochinos, does not derive from wild boar, but from a species of fish called triggerfish, which are also called cochinos in Cuba. Within sight of the Bay of Pigs are many sea notes cast caves whose ceiling has collapsed and that are filled with fresh water. To get a few cochinos, that's Caribbean triggerfish, out of the bay is something Haniel and Idiesti would really like to do. The condom bait construction is hardly installed and something already seems to bite but it would look different with a big fish. Aniel knows that. There's just one nibbling the bait. 
usually a small barracuda. So, new bait and back in. Idiestin needs to come back. Oh, I just stepped on a sea urchin. It's not the first time. You have to watch out for sea urchins when you're barefoot. There are a lot of those here in the bay. It can happen that a stinger tip breaks off when you step on it and then moves around in the body. That can also get infected. But most of the time, a sting like that isn't all that bad. The spines of the diadem sea urchin can grow up to 40 centimeters long. Right in the bottom of the foot. That's not so bad. It happens to me regularly. Quickly take the new bait and attach it to the condom float outside. They fish for their personal needs. When they catch something, it opens up a whole new set of opportunities. Fish is a perfect barter commodity. For example, one person has chicken and wants something different. Then he gets fish from me and I get chicken. As the saying goes, you help me and I'll help you. So, wait and see. Or maybe there is something wrong with the latex balloons after all. Idiesti undresses once again and goes into the water. Usually, when a really big fish bites, it pulls the condom down, and here's what happens. The water pressure makes them burst. But these imported condoms are really sturdy. The Cuban ones need very little traction and then they break. They still have a few condoms left. Idiesti and Aniel continue to try their emotionally ingenious catch method. Cuba is a fertile land. The Spanish, British and Americans recognized this early on. For centuries, they exploited the island and also the slaves who had to grow tobacco and sugarcane here. At the beginning of the 20th century, Milton Hershey, the chocolate entrepreneur from the USA, built a huge factory east of Havana complete with a settlement, school, and a cinema for the workers' families. 100 years later, the place is almost deserted. The Hershey Company also installed Cuba's only electric railroad line to date in 1919. An ancient rail car still exists. After a long break for repairs, a first test run is to take place under the leadership of Osvaldo Perdomo, the rail district boss. The Ministry of Transport, the railroad company and the electricity company have sent their representatives. They are proud of the old electrified line. Until Hurricane Irma in 2017, the railroad was still running regularly but the repair jam on the train and track delayed the resumption of regular service. Yet people here need public transport. The route goes through a very rural area with valleys and wide countryside. 
The train stops almost every kilometer. There are many farmers who have cows in the pastures here. They take the train in the morning to go milking, and then another one back home in the evening. The test drive seems to be going well. Passengers are not harmed, but the ride is over for now. The pantograph's loop bar is completely torn off. It somehow got jammed in the lines. It was probably bent backwards and then slammed down. The train's drive is now broken. That means we're stuck here for now. Let's see how we solve this now. The initial actions are coordinated by Willisley Esquerdo, chief technician. We've cut the power now, and our people can go up and check on things. Perdomo, we really need to tell the mechanics to be careful. And we need a sledgehammer. Nothing works without a hammer. We'll try to solve the problem right now. Say, do you have a walkie-talkie with you? So we can call Juan Carlos and he can bring the spare parts quickly. We're definitely going to need a sledgehammer. The linkage of the pantograph is twisted and totally bent. The loop bar is torn off and broken. The spare part is arriving. With a hammer, a bit of wire and a lot of improvisational talent, the problem is solved after 30 minutes. The train can continue its journey. Now the railroad is running again. But in general, it's very expensive and complicated to maintain this technology. Spare parts would have to be imported, but that's very difficult. Osvaldo Perdomo has the rail car driven back to the workshop for safety's sake. In total, Cuba's only electric railroad has mastered just two kilometers on this day. This too is Cuba. White dream beaches, tens of kilometers long. On the Varadero Peninsula, the tourist stronghold in the north of the island. To ensure that as few swimming accidents as possible occur on these beaches, the Cuban government has launched a large scale lifeguard program. On Varadero alone, there are almost 400 so called salvavidas. Sony Cantillo Rodriguez is one of them. However, he lives quite far away from his workplace. From here, it's a good 43 kilometers that I have to ride. I've got used to it. It's like drinking a cup of coffee for me by now. It gives me a kick. Physically, I'm very well equipped for the day afterwards. Normal para mí. Muy preparado, físicamente. If Sony wants to be on time, he can't rely on public transport 
like horse-drawn carriages. So the 46-year-old takes his bike and rides it nearly 90 kilometers every day. On the beach, Sony meets his fellow lifeguard, Idaris. Hello, my dear. You're here already. What time did you arrive? 7.30. How are you? Super. I pedaled like hell. Let's get changed quickly. The others are already waiting. Idaris and Sony often work as a team. Today, however, all the lifeguards of the beach section were rounded up for a drill. Half of the group played drowning victims, the others are the rescuers. Idaris has to get a smaller person out of the water and I have to get an adult female. We have to swim out 100 meters, use the rescue grip and then put the person down here. José Ángel Castro leads the training. Cuban lifeguards are the only ones in the world who work only with their own bodies, without any aids. That's why skills like rescue grips need to be practiced frequently. Technical aids are not available to us. Saving lives without tools like life rings, buoys or even boats. For this purpose, the Cuban Lifeguard Association has developed very special rescue grips, both for recovery in deep water and for transport in the shallow water zone. Quite a drudgery. End of exercise, Sony and the other Salvavidas can take up their posts on the good 20 kilometers of white sandy beach. There is no other place in the world with so many classic cars in one place as Havana. The reason? Before the revolution, the island was a playground for rich Americans who brought their cars with them. After the revolution, the borders were closed and the classic cars couldn't get out. But neither could new cars enter the country. It was a necessity to preserve the old. Today, the cars of the class enemy are a trademark of the capital. Hola, taxi amigo, hola. I've been looking for a car like this for a long time. I wanted one with an original V8 engine. The way it sounds, I'm really in love with it. I call it El Ronco, the snorer. <laughs> My little snorer. <laughs> the car was a considerable investment, but it's also possible to earn good money with it. English? Okay. It's the car, you know, the thing. Okay. We're making this more tour. One hour. Okay. Different area. How much is it? It's uh, 30. 30. 30. But I show you different places in Havana. Okay. A lot of people call it the Barbie convertible. Passengers at last, for 30 US dollars an hour. If things go well, Tutti will earn considerably more than in her actual profession economist. 
First, they drive through La Habana Vieja, the historic old town of Havana. It has been a UNESCO World Heritage Site since 1982. Okay, guys, look at in the way. Welcome to the Revolution Square. Very important places. Puente de vida del hombre y los animales. Se esconde en la llanura para que salga mi luna. Y de rienda suelta esta locura. Calle en Cuba. De Cuba soy. Y a Cuba voy. De Cuba soy. Photo shoot under the stern gaze of Fidel Castro and Che Guevara. Tutti also quickly crosses a few outlying districts and then the one-hour classic car tour is already over. Tutti gets off work early today. She heads home along the Malecon, Havana's famous waterfront. Tutti lives in a semi-detached house in an outlying district with her sister, an aunt, and her parents. They have just renovated their roof terrace. Their son Tiago is taken care of by the women of the family in turns when Tutti is on the road with the vintage car. After a long day at work, I look forward to spending time with my son, although the second shift is about to start for me here. Cooking, cleaning up, playing. And tomorrow it's off again early, with a classic car to work in the sun. But when there are days that are hard for me, then one look at him is enough and I'm fully motivated again. And now we'll paint another little flower. On the south coast of Cuba, Playa La Máquina, the vehicle beach, is somewhat hidden. What sounds a little unromantic is a very relaxed spot in the Caribbean. Since 1982, there has been a weekend settlement here, built from discarded buses, trailers and caravans. The 150 stalls are popular, especially by city-weary Havana residents. There is only one problem in this settlement, and that's what Ivani Alfonso Gomez takes care of, with the help of his ancient tractor. The people here have no drinking water, and so it's of utmost importance that we bring them water. First, his 47-year-old tractor also needs five liters of fresh water and a lot of attention. The tractor no longer has a starter. I always have to make sure to park it on a bit of a slope because it only starts when I let it roll down a hill. Hopefully it will work now. I'm going to roll. It's only 20 meters to the bungalow further down. Shortly before the neighboring hut, the engine really starts. Ivani works as a team with his son, Paolo. The two earn their living with the water delivery service.
to fetch water, they have to drive to the next small town. 30 minutes on a country road. This is the only place far and wide where there's drinking water. Only here are we officially allowed to tap water and resell it. A large part of Cuba's rural population is not connected to the public drinking water network and therefore needs water supplies. Some time ago there were still various people here who tried to offer such a service. But because there was always something broken, we first helped out and then later took over completely. Now we're the only ones who drive around here with the tank truck and deliver water. It is full when it overflows. Matanzas is the largest city near Varadero in the north of the island. Right in the center of town is the lifeguard school. All Salvavidas have to refresh their licenses here regularly. Idaris and Sony have a course this morning. Sony had his first mission at the age of 10 when he saved the life of his six-year-old sister. My sister suddenly went down while swimming. I already knew how to swim and dived under her without knowing how to do a proper life-saving grip. I put her on my back and got her out. So it was fate that told me, Sony, you have to become a lifeguard and save lives. Let's go. The 400 lifeguards in the Varadero region go to school once a month. Again and again, they train how to resuscitate properly. Sony has to demonstrate adult and baby handling in front of the class. The same goes for the baby. The first question, is it breathing or not? If there's respiratory arrest, because there's water in the lungs or something similar, you have to do mouth-to-mouth -mouth or mouth-to-nose resuscitation right away. School is out at noon, and Sony has to go to the beach for the late shift. It's 20 kilometers from school to his section. A piece of cake for him. Before going on duty, Sony gets coconuts for himself and to earn a few extra pesos. Un gladiador. Like a gladiator. I'd like to give the coconuts to the people on the beach, for a small fee. That's my daily workout, biking, running and swimming and climbing palm trees. That's how you stay young. And I go on and on and on. Coconut water is free and low in calories. For Sony, a perfect fitness drink. Then he moves into his workplace, a watchtower on a 500 meter wide stretch of beach. There has not been a serious incident here in a long time, because Sony is paying attention.
At Playa La Máquina, people are already waiting for Ivani, his son Paolo, and their precious cargo. The father and son sell the drinking water for 100 pesos per 1,000 liters. According to the official exchange rate, that's about 4 euros. The minimum wage in Cuba has recently been set at 2,100 pesos, just under 80 euros per month. People are happy about our service. It feels really good to be needed like that. The first house requires a bit of fiddling, but Ivani always has old bicycle inner tubes with him. Not until we get the connection tight can we pump this tank full. Residents of the house made a level indicator with a cork. But here too, it's full when it overflows. Neighbor Pedro Avilla Ramirez is also supplied from the same position, this time from above. There's just no other way to get drinking water here. And it is full. Pedro is considered one of the most creative in the settlement. We take what's available to us. We just invent new things from old things. For example, I made a floating cage for trapped fish out of this TV. Something discarded always gets a new life with us. In Cuba, you don't throw away anything. Ivani and Paolo can supply 10 houses with one load of water. Some leave a message at the door, but most see us and wave us nearer. They can't do more than three rounds a day. Once they're finished with all the houses in the settlement, a week is over. And Ivani and Paolo start all over again with their drinking water delivery. In Cuba, there is a solution for everything. <laughs>